Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to utilize that credit limit value that we have in our customer database. We'll calculate the customer's unpaid order total, subtract that from their credit limit, and show the available credit left. Today's question comes from Roger in Salt Lake City, Utah, one of my gold members. Roger says, and I'm paraphrasing, in your database you have a credit limit field, but you don't do anything with it. How can I see how much credit a customer has available before they put an order in? Roger actually posted this in the access forum on my website, and like I said, I was paraphrasing his question, and uh, the guys gave him some help, Alex and Kevin, and uh, they got a working solution for him, but I was saying to myself when they posted this, this would make a great video, so here we go. Now, before we get started, we've got some prerequisites for you. We can do this without any programming, but you're going to have to watch a couple other videos first. If you haven't yet watched my invoicing video, go watch this. This is where I show you how to put the order entry system in and print out invoices. You will need to know what an aggregate query is. That's where you can sum up records in a query. All right, so go watch this. If you don't know what a field name alias is, go watch this video. Here's a big one, dsum. We're going to use this function to calculate the actual amount of unpaid orders that the user has. So make sure you understand how to use dsum. It's a cousin of dlookup. And just in case that customer doesn't have any orders, you might get a null value return. So go watch the nz function video to show you how to convert null values over to zeros. These are all free videos, by the way. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch all of those first and then come on back and finish this one. I'll wait, I'll wait for you. Go on. Go ahead. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website. And if you watch the invoicing video, you know that already. And I strongly recommend you build the invoicing database yourself. That's the best way to learn. Don't just download my copy. You can if you want to, but the downloads are there for people who like, maybe they built it a while back, but they want to download it and see what I've done. Or, you know, if you want to learn this stuff, the best way to do it is to just do it yourself. Follow along with me. Okay. So we've got our customers and each customer has an order. Okay. And each order has an order total that's calculated. The line item information is in the order detail table, okay? And we have this order detail query that calculates the extended price by multiplying each item's unit price by its quantity. And all of those extended prices add up down here for each order, okay? So these are all calculated values. You don't have to store those in the tables anywhere. Now, since these are all calculated values, and I basically want to put that value here, the easiest way to go about this is to make another query that has all of our order totals in it. So let's make an order total query. All right, so create, query design. We're going to bring in, let me turn that off, bring in the order table and the order detail query because that guy has the extended price in it, which we need, okay? So what do we want to see in this query? Let's just bring in only the fields we really need, right? Bring only what you need to survive. It's my industrial strength hair dryer, and I can't live without it. Okay, who knows that movie quote? Anyways, we need the order ID. I want the customer ID because I got to be able to pick the customer, right? I need the is paid because we only care about orders that are not paid. If they're paid already, then they don't count toward your credit limit, right? And I'll also need the extended price from over here. And if I run this guy right now, that's what it looks like. Okay. Here you can see all of the line items for order one. Here are all the line items for order two. And there's one line item for order three. But what I want is I want to put these together. I want to sum these up. So each order is its own line in here, its own record. So to do that, we're going to turn this into an aggregate query. Turn the add tables box off there. All right, go to totals. This turns on the aggregate functions. Group by group by group by, that's fine. Those are all going to be the same because they're from the same table. This guy over here, what do I want to do here? I want to sum that up. And now when I run it, look at that. I got one item for each order, right? Order one, there's its order total. 
order two, there's its order total. And I don't wanna see sum of extended price in here. So let's put an alias on that right here. We'll call this order total colon, just like that. Root, see, right there. <laughs> I just discovered this feature, by the way. <laughs> I think it's so you could find your mouse if you got like a multi-monitor setup, but I just discovered you double tap control key. Root. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Been using the computer how many years and I just figured that out. All right, but now if I run that, there you go. That's what I want to see there. Don't worry that it's not a currency. We're going to format the text box later. All right, let's save this. Control S, save this as my order total Q. Order total Q. Okay, now for the next step, we're going to put a box on the customer form showing their total of unpaid orders. And so far, these are all unpaid orders. So let's go, let's go, let's go add some stuff in here real quick. All right, so here's, uh, let's go to customer form, go to orders. All right, customer one, there's a $55 order. Here's a test. Let's put something else in here. All right, this will be a $500 order, but let's say this one's paid. Okay, and uh, one more order. This one's for a phaser rifle. And it's $700 and he hasn't paid it yet. Okay. All right. So if I run that query now, my order total Q, there we go. Okay. 55, there's a $500 paid order and there's $700 down here unpaid. So you can see I got a couple of unpaid orders. And now what I want to do is on the customer form, I want to sum up the order totals from the order total Q where the customer ID equals the current customer ID, right, on that form, and is paid equals false. So right there, I just kind of said in English what my dsum function is going to be. In fact, a lot of times what I'll do when I got this query open is I'll, I'll pop up my handy dandy notepad, right? And I'll just write the function in here, equals dsum, all right? What field am I summing up, order total, all right? From where, order, total, Q. All right, what are my criteria? Where the customer ID equals, and it's gonna be the customer ID on the customer form, and this will be in a field on the customer form, so I can just go and customer ID like that. That'll take the customer ID that's on that form and plop it right in here so that it'll say customer ID equals seven, or whatever their number is. All right, continue our string, and is paid equals false, like that. And there, we just wrote our dsum function. Now, we're gonna set this aside for a second. Yeah, I got a big monitor, I'm sliding over to the right. It's over here, see, it's, it's hiding there. I use two things a lot, I use Notepad and I use Paint, believe it or not, I use Microsoft Paint. Comes at Windows, just to like take a screenshot of something real quick and put it over on the side. Okay, so I got what I need from this, let's put that field here on our form. So, design view. And I'm going to close this back up just to save some space here. All right, open that up like that. Let's take credit limit. And I'm just going to slide it down just to set it apart. All right, copy, paste. All right, change the label over here. This will be available credit. All right, open up the properties for this box. The name of the box is going to be available credit. If I could spell today. All right. The control source is going to be that thing we just typed in. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here in the control source. If it helps you, you can zoom in. Shift F2, zoom in. Usually I do my typing in here, but paste. There we go. Equals D sum. Sum up the order total from the order total Q where the customer ID equals the customer ID from this form that we're on, right? A space, because we gotta continue the string now, is it string concatenation. If you don't know about string concatenation, go watch my concatenation video. I'll put that in the links section down below. I should have listed it in the prerequisites, but usually if you're to the point where you're watching the invoicing video and the aggregate queries and stuff like that, you know about concatenation, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, and is paid equals false. Hit okay. All right, that goes in here. Now, I like to make my calculated fields like this guy. I like to make them gray. In fact, I'll use the format painter. Boop. 
just like that. And make sure this says currency. Currency. Okay. Save that. Close it. Open it. And there we go. Is available credit 755. Or excuse me. Excuse me. I got that wrong. That's not available credit. That's unpaid order total. <laughs> Let's go in and fix it. And I'm leaving this in the video because if I make a mistake like this, chances are you will too. Available credit comes next, right? This is going to be unpaid orders. Unpaid order total, we'll call it. Okay, unpaid orders. Okay, available credit is next. Available credit, we're going to copy this guy. Copy, paste, one more time. And this is the easy one, right? Available credit. All right, let's name this guy available credit. Okay, and this one's real easy. This one is simply what? Equals credit limit minus unpaid order total. And when it pops up like that, just hit tab and it'll fill it in. Okay, I'll zoom in so you can see it. There you go. All righty. Save it. Let's close the form. Save it, close it, open it, right? There you go. There's your available credit. If you want, throw a little conditional formatting on that maybe, right? Design view. We can open this guy up like this. Go to format, conditional formatting. New rule. We'll say if the field value is greater than whatever number you want, I'll say greater than zero, we'll make it green. Okay, and new rule. If it's less than zero, we'll make it red. That way you're like, you're over your credit limit, buddy. If it's equal to zero, you'll still get the same gray. Okay. All right. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. Look at that. He's green. Available credit. Now, if I go to the next guy, he's in the red. Because he's only got a $4,000 credit limit, but he's got an order in the system already for $37,000. Now, in the extended cut, I'm going to show you how to prevent that. All right. In the extended cut for the members, if they try to put something in that puts you over your credit limit, like, you know, 200 pairs of Captain Picard underoos, it's going to yell at you and say you're over the credit limit. All right. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But for now, this is just giving us a visual. Okay. Couple of things. First thing is if you go to a new record, okay. The customer ID is null. There isn't one there yet. And we don't want the user seeing errors over here, right? So let's throw an NZ function around that customer ID so that in case the customer ID is null, it turns it into a zero. All right, design view. Go into our function here. Click there, shift F2 to zoom in. Okay, and I'm gonna put an NZ around this guy, NZ. Open parentheses, come after the customer ID and go comma zero. So if customer ID is null, the NZ function will turn it into a zero and it won't cause an error in the DSUM function. All right, hit OK. Save it, close it, open it. Now if I go to a new record, all right, I don't get anything in there. It's just blank. But you might not want to see blank. You might want to actually see a zero there. All right. Especially if you go to like another customer who doesn't have an order. If I go to customer three who doesn't have an order. I see a null there again. Why is that? Well, because the D sum function is evaluating customer three's orders. They don't have any. So D sum is returning null. So again, we can put a second NZ function there, wrap it around the whole thing, and that will return a zero as well. So back to design view. Um, back in here where we just were. Okay, so we've we've taken care of if customer ID is null. But what about if the D sum doesn't find any orders? It'll return a null value. We don't want that. So we'll put NZ out here. NZ, this whole thing. Comma zero. Look at that. All right, now if they don't have any orders, you'll get a zero there. Save it, close it, open it, go back to Deanna, and there's your zero. And she has $4,339 available credit. 
And if you go to a new record, it should still also, yep, there's your zeros. Okay, sweet. So that's how you can see visually what their available credit is. So now when you go to place an order, I like to have it so that like in my final version of my database, I'll have that and I'll have this like over here. So you can see them side by side. All right, so let's talk about that extended cut. Two things we're gonna do. We're gonna prevent the user from going over the credit limit and we're gonna update that available credit limit each time the user changes an item on the order so you can see it in real time. All right, here's the extended cut database. All right, if I come in here and I try to put in, you know, 20 pairs of those, all right, it allows that because that's under the credit limit. Notice how it updated over here. Okay, if I come in here and I put in here, uh, you know, Worf's tooth sharpener, and that's uh, $600, or yeah, one of them, <laughs> $600, I can't type today. And then, oh, this will put the customer over the credit limit. I'm gonna set the quantity to zero. There's a million ways you can handle this, and yes, some are more elegant than this, but easily, just for now, to keep it easy, I just set the quantity to zero. And then the user can come back and say, well, sorry, sir, that's too, too expensive, or I'll give you a discount. All right, I'll give you one at 5.30. How's that sound? There we go. Okay, and I got 10 bucks left. Okay, so that's what we're gonna cover in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, all of them. There's, there's hundreds of them by now. Been doing this for years. And uh, gold members can download these databases that I build in the tech help videos. And if you really wanna learn this order entry system stuff, with you know credit limits and sales tax and quantities and inventory and all that. I got lots and lots and lots of lessons on building an order entry system. I start for real in my Access Expert Level 8 class because by level eight, you've learned enough between the beginner series and the first seven expert classes. You know, you've learned about form design and queries and, and, uh, and, and things like that. So we can now start building the order entry system. So that's where you wanna start if you wanna learn how to do that after you finish the other ones, of course. And it goes all the way up through the expert series and into the developer classes, depending on how far you want to go. There's, you know, you need, you need VBA to do proper inventory control. And I teach you all of it. I'll hold your hand. I'll walk you through the whole thing. But that's where you want to start. But that, my friends, is your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. And I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, 
Check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.